So um, we're going to start machining our Titan one in part today. As I as I get, let you know before we went on uh, went away for uh, the weekend, I'm going to have Genesis go first. She has a little bit more experience than most people in the class because she's on the robotics team and has been using the machine. So I'm going to have her kind of walk through the process. I'm going to talk while she's doing it. Um, I'm going to give you guys kind of a heads up. So make sure you have your safety glasses. Make sure you have closed toe shoes. If you don't, you can observe longingly from the classroom while we're doing this. Okay. Any questions before we go outside? Yes. Do you have an extra pair of safety goggles? Do I have an extra pair of safety Wait, goggles? I do have safety glasses, yes. There's some in the, the, yes. the uh, robotics room? There, there's some in here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead and go out to the shop. Yes, indeed. Whoa. So what Janice is going to do, she, I gave her a piece of material, um, it's cut, this is the Titan 1M, so does anybody remember how, what, or how long the Titan 1M was? Wasn't it like five, five by like two. four? It's a, it was four inches, it was four by, the material is 4.1 by two by one. So, yeah, you can could, you could pull it if you want to. Um, so I cut, the piece of material was cut to like four and a quarter, so it's a little bit longer than it needs to be, and it's two inch by one inch, 60-61 T6 aluminum. So that's a, the same material that was specced in the, uh, the drawing. So I'm gonna have her put it in and kind of talk, and I'm gonna let her zero the machine, I'm gonna talk through um, how to zero a part of the hose. Unlike the bench mill, yeah, and kind of you notice when we were programming it, the zero's in a different spot, right? Where's the zero on this part? On the uh, middle. It's in the middle, right? The middle top. So on the bench mill, we put the zero down here in the bottom corner, right? In the bottom left-hand corner of the part. And it's always there. Remember, if you're drawing on the graph paper, the, the origin was in the left-hand side bottom of the paper, right? So when, when we're doing this, the origins in the middle. And the best way to kind of get in the middle is what we're going to do is we're going to touch off the left side, touch off the right side, and calculate the difference or that distance that we covered, divide that in half, and then go to the middle. And then we'll do the same thing in Y. So we'll touch on top, touch on bottom, and then go to the middle. All right? I divided, divided this into three programs just to kind of make it easier. So we do have the front side. Do you remember all the operations that we have on the front side? What's the first operation? Facing. Facing. And then pocket on the inside and then the outside profile right what's next you can do the chamfer but the outside and inside chamfers the spot drill drill and tap cycle so there's the what the chamfers yeah the, the chamfer chamfering operation okay so that's all on the front side and we put the part over what we have to do you have to face it off, and then profile. we already did the outside profile in the first operation. So what? So facing and facing and chamfer, right? We need oh. to do the backside chamfer. So I broke the backside facing and the backside chamfer apart because it's hard to get an exact zero. So you're actually going to have to zero this part three times. So we zero it this side center. We flip it over. We zero it again. And then once it's done facing, we zero it again on the machine surfaces. That way we know the chamfer is going to be in exactly the right spot, right? So Genesis right now is going through. Um, she is zeroing on the X. So she has a round pin in there and a piece of paper. So I, I talked some of you guys through this when we did the, the uh, machining on the bench mill. You use the piece of paper and you get it closer and closer until it pinches and it doesn't move anymore, right? And you, then you would take the paper out. you. You zero it, and you go to the other side and do the same thing. And then you're going to divide the distance between the two. You're going to do the same thing in Y.
recommend you do is go into position and then origin. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you have a couple different pieces of plate or a couple of different places where you can store information. Do you have the general offsets, which measures things like tool heights and where the part is going to be? And then you have what are called operator offsets. Those are things you can just store in there temporarily. So in Genesis did, she came in and touched on the side of the part and then made that zero in her operator, uh, operator position. She goes up and goes over and touches on the other side, and that gives her a number. So she's doing, she's doing X right now. I'm uh, seeing the number change. It's like four-ish inches right now. That, again, that stock is about four and a quarter inches long, and the pin is half of an inch in diameter. So you should get somewhere around 4.75, between you know, 4.65 and 4.75. So going a little bit smaller. And then once we have the X0, we're going to do the Y. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a built-in calculator onto the con on the controller, um, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to. It's easier just to use your phone. So the number she has is 4.6633, and then you divide that in half, and what do you get? 2.33165. 2.33165. So that works out um, as you think it would. So she's going to go up in Z, and then she's going to go back over until her operator position number reads what she just calculated on the calculator, okay? So she's kind of going up in Z to make sure she clears everything, make sure her tool doesn't hit the side of the material, move it out of position, anything like that. that the, the controller only goes, goes down to ten thousandths of an inch, so we're going to lose the, the millionth spot, we're going to round up on our ten thousandths spot, ten thousandths of an inch spot. Okay, so we have the X, we're in the middle of the X, so we're exactly in the middle of our block of material, now we're going to do the Y, so we're going to come up and touch on this side of the Y, we're going to go up, go over, and go down and touch the other side of Y. Okay, and I'll walk you through all this when it's your turn. on the bench mill she has a different she has a the wheel and she can adjust by different amounts so on the bench mill it was I think it was 1x 10x and 100x right the Haas controller tells you more literally what that is it tells you it's either one ten thousandth of an inch one thousandth of an inch one hundredth of an inch or one tenth of an inch so when she pushes the buttons in, so she's changing how far it moves every time she clicks the hand wheel, the jog wheel. So you want to get more and more precise until uh, you're kind of at the smallest part and then you get your paper pinched in there. Okay, so she touched off one side, she's going to the other side and do, it, uh, do that there. So what we're going to do next is after we zero our block, we need to touch off our tools. Just like on the bench mill, we have a, we have a couple different tools, right? We generally only used, um, except on your, except on one part, you used the end mill and then the kind of engraving tool, right? So we have five different tools we're going to use on this. We have the shear mill, 3 8 end mill, spot drill and chamfer drill, or chamfer mill, uh, tap drill, and then a 1032 tap. So all five of those tools have already been zero. We have a, a metal, a big piece of metal in there, it's a piece of steel about this tall. We go down, we just touch the top of that with all the tools, and then we remember that position. Then what Jess is going to do is she's going to take one tool, double check to make sure that's a good number, and then she's going to zero her operator position. She's going to go over and touch the top of her stock, and that will give her a difference, difference between the top of the tool post and the top of the stock. 
And she puts that in, in what is called the work coordinate system, G54, G55, you guys remember that? We're using G54, so she will put that as a Z offset in the G54. It should be, when I ran it was like negative 200 nozzles. So the difference between the top of the stock and the top of the material, that distance in Z is about 200 thousandths of an inch. So she has her X and Y. She's gonna go ahead and, uh, we, I like to use tool one, which is the spot drill, and that is the tool that she selected. So we're gonna kind of grab tool one. Um, she's going to go over, and she's gonna go down and touch the top of her stock with the tool one and get that difference in height. So she's gonna do it the same way. She's going to get pretty close, grab her piece of paper, put the piece of paper between the material and the tool and go down until that piece of paper can't move anymore. You don't want it to like really punch through there. This machine is very strong. It can punch a really big dent into the material if you're not paying attention. That's why you want to go nice and slow and go until it just grabs. It's just enough where there's not enough material that paper can move anymore. And once you have that, we kind of have an estimate of what the thickness of the material is or what the thickness of the paper is and we can put that offset in. Yeah, so the way we did it on the bench mill, when we were machining the wax, we had the tool running, and then we'd go down until we saw a few chips fly off. That's a faster way of doing it, but it also marks your material. So if you don't remove that mark, then it's gonna be kind of messed up. You're gonna have that mark on there, and you don't want that all the time. We, yeah. So you, so you could only do that if you know you're gonna like, get the mark there. Okay, so you can only have the spindle running and go down and touch it if you know you're gonna remove yeah. that mark. Yeah, that's, yeah, if you're not sure that you're going to face off the whole top of the material, I wouldn't recommend doing that. We know that we're going to do it here, but it's generally not as good to do. It's just not as professional. You wouldn't do that like a machine shop environment. Um, so you would use this method more than you would a different method. But if you're doing a quick and dirty part on your own, like on the manual mill or a manual lathe, that's how you would do it. You would just go, you see a few chips fly off, and then you would zero your position. That's okay. We'll take that off in our facing operation. Okay. So she got a slight difference in what I got. That could be because of the difference in material sizes. Um, it could be just maybe it's not sitting perfectly level. There's a lot of things. But when we face it off, it will kind of take that take that into account. Yeah, you can go ahead and change it. So she got about five thousandths of an inch, point zero zero five difference than what I got. Are you in the center? Yep. So, yep, okay. So she zeroed her G54, X and Y. Um, how, am I, how I have these programs listed in here, it's 7,000. 7001 and 7002. So those three operations, they're going to go in numerical order, starting with 7000, 7001, and 7002. Okay, so go ahead and load up uh, job 7000. Yeah, you can go ahead. I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick. Um, the tool is down touching that material, right? You can see it touching material. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit MDI, and I'm going to, you can do this by turning the jog wheel and kind of going slowly up there. But what you can do is if you press the letter Z, and then there's this uh, command called home G28 under the zero return line. It will take it all the way up to its zero position automatically for you. You don't have to kind of manually crank it. All right, so go ahead and load up the program. So the program's not on the flash drive. There's no flash drive in it, it's already in the memory. So you're gonna go into list program, you're gonna go into memory and kind of go through that list. Is it typing M, I mean, typing one M? Off one, yes, yeah, 7,000. Yeah, it's the one you have selected. And if it's not the one you have selected, what do you have to do? You gotta go and get the flashlight. Well, no, it's on. The, it's already on there, right? But but it's not selected. Okay. So it kind of a refresher. If the if the job you want is not the job that's active, you go and highlight it with um, make sure it's in yellow, and then press select program. That will load that program into memory for you. 
Nope, just leave it, leave it there, just make sure it's selected. Yep, so just make sure it's selected program. It's in the memory. So go ahead and uh, run a graph, uh, a graphing, graphical simulation for me and just make sure that it's not going to give you any errors or anything like that. So you're going to memory and then setting graphics twice. Cycle like start. That's the same thing you guys just did. So this, that kind of got you used to running, doing this step. Yeah, I have a sync or, op or optional stop on, so it stops after oh, every tool. Okay. So you can turn optional stop off on the memory settings and go ahead and hit cycle start again. There are some, uh, Bob can put some stopping points in there. What I like to do is the first time I run a part, I want to stop after every program and inspect it, or after every tool and inspect it. They have a feature called optional stop, and Bob can puts an optional stop in after every tool change. So if I, if I have the optional stop on, and it gets to a tool change, it'll do, it'll wait, and then we press go again, it'll do the tool change and go on to the next step. Okay. Satisfied? Looks like it's gonna run okay? Yeah. Okay, so what's next? Um, reset. Yep, go ahead and reset it. Okay. Memory? The memory, if you press memory again from the graphical simulation, it puts you back into the running part. If you were just to hit go again, and that simulation window is up, it would just run the simulation again. So you need to hit memory to go back into the place where you can run it. Ready? Nervous? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's all right. So I already, I already proofed the first part, which is the facing and the pocket in the middle and the, uh, the profile on the outside. So there's, there you have nothing to worry about as long as you zero the part. <laughs> <laughs> I have to turn the cord on? Or on, on no, nope, it's all good. Okay. So she's just going to press cycle start. It's going to change to our first tool. Our first tool is the shear mill, right? So you go in and do the facing. It's not taking much off, but it is going to take a little bit of material off. You guys can get close to the window if you want to see it running. Just if she opens the window to blow anything off, just make sure you give it a little bit of room. Water-soluble oil. It's 
kind of this thick liquid, you mix it with oil, and then it turns into that white compound. It's really, it's really slick, it's, you know, it has a good lubricity, but it's still very thin. Some machines use straight oil, it's called hard cut oil, but we don't use that here. It's kind of messy and it's very, very expensive. You know, this uh, five gallon bucket of this maybe costs us 50 or $60. A five gallon bucket of hard cut oil could cost you over 100. Normally they don't even sell it. They sell the 55 gallon drums, which are $1,000 a piece. Very expensive. But it's really important that we recycle all this. If you were just taking this, pumping it through and dumping it down the drain, you'll get very expensive very quickly. operation and kind of uh, Genesis blow it off so you can see what the part looks like right now. Um, just going to do this, go back around, do it one more time and do the finish pass. Cutting all the way around, doing that last pass. So it's going to take material all the way around again, pretty close to the finish side.
Okay, going back up. Now it's going to come back down for that finish pass. Again, going nice and slow. It's not touching the material, it's just going down and see. Then it's going to kind of go nice and quick. Has a feed rate. Uh, see the next feed rate I see. 63 inches per minute. So that's going to go at a pretty good clip. Think back to the, uh, the bench mill. They told you to run about eight inches per minute. This next, it's about to do 63 inches per minute. So a lot faster. Here it kind of pause at the corners. It's actually doing the chamfers that it has on those corners at right now. So it's kind of going at an angle across the corners. Okay, so this is that optional stop part I told you about. Um, go ahead and open it up and blow it off. So I'm just gonna have everybody kind of walk through and just check it out, uh, take a look at it before we run the next operation. This is, what's the next operation like? Center drill? So the center drill for the tap tools, okay. So. Oh, then it's good. Oh, okay, so um, Bob Kemp likes to kind of run as, or make this run as fast as possible. The tool changes take a, a decent amount of time, right, relative to how much time you could be cutting. If you want to do an operation, and you had to change tools and do another operation, it would slow you down. So what this is going to do, it's going to change to tool one, which is spot drill and the chamfer mill, right? So it's going to spot drill all the holes, and then it's going to do the inside and outside chamfers before it goes on to you grab the drill and drill those holes. Okay? Wait, so it's going to do the, the chamfers, chamfers first? And then it's, um, it's going to spot drill first. It's going to center drill the holes, and then it will do the chamfer. All right. All right. You ready, Genesis? All right, here we go. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, go ahead and hit it again. Oh, yeah. These doors, uh, these, the doors will sense if they're not closed all the way. So you need to, sometimes you need to jiggle them a little bit and press go again. So it's doing the automatic tool change. It's a little bit fancier than the one on the bench mill. Chamfer goes up. Now it's going to do the outside chamfer. Oh, you can turn it off. What, what I recommend is going to do the center, it's going to do the uh, drill next. Go ahead and stop it before it does the tap, though. And we'll blow out all the holes. Okay, so it's going to stop here. It's going to change the to tap it for a 1032 tap. So it's doing a peck cycle. It's going to take it in seven steps. It goes down a little bit further each time. Oh man, look out. Will you, uh, Even though it is fully enclosed, there is an opening at the top, so sometimes you can get sprayed. It's just kind of the hazard of working on these machines. What is coolant made Coolant is a water-soluble oil. So they kind of formulate oil. Normal oil separates from water, right? Well, they formulate it so it mixes with oil and kind of makes it, um, makes it thicker. Okay, so go ahead and... Uh, 
This is, it's getting ready to change to the tap. Go ahead and open it up, blow out all the holes, put a little bit of A9 in each of them before we start the tap. So cooling is really good for milling stuff, but it's not very good for taps. Taps leave really big chips and it's kind of, it's kind of messy. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil, actual oil in here when it does the tapping operation. <laughs> Give a little bit of a, a little drop in each one of them. And that's just going to make it extra lubricated. You know, the, it, this is going fairly deep with the tap, but it shouldn't. Hopefully, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, but by far, this is the operation that gets messed up most. Taps break fairly easily, unfortunately. Um, it's just kind of a, you know, a downside of using taps. There are other methods you can use for cutting threads. This is something you kind of have to deal with, though. So just gonna hit cycle start, and it's gonna change to the tap. Go nice and slow. Oh, go ahead and stop it. Yeah, reset it. Okay, so this happens. For some reason, this post on Bobcam messes this up. Um, it has a... It has a feature where there's two different ways you can tap a hole. You can do a, a feed per revolution or a, just a total feed like inches per minute. And it likes to mess this up so it does uh, feed per revolution sometimes and feed, uh, feed, per, um, uh, feed per minute others. So I do have to, sometimes this has to be fixed. Yeah. So every time the tool spins, it would go a certain distance down. This is a G43, just tool length compensation, and then a G84, which is our taps, tapping can cycle, and then a G99, which is fine. That's the height, H04 is the height. And then the here, I'm kind of looking right here and I see this feed rate. So if I go into edit and I can change this, um, looking for the F, I can see that the feed rate is uh, 0.0, uh, 0.0313, so that's very, very slow. So I'm gonna change that. We're going 320 uh, RPM, so I'm gonna go 10 inch per minute. So I'm gonna go feed 10 point and then hit alter. 10 inches per minute. So I'm gonna go back up and see. But it's, a, it's, a, it's like it's a, a, a 1032 tap. So you take the, the 32 um, and then you divide it by the, I think you divide it by the number uh, above it. So there's a, the software Bobcam takes care of that for you most of the time. So I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to give it a shot to see what it does, see if it freaks out again. So this is what I expected. Goes all the way down, stops, the reverse the spindle, comes all the way back up. It'll do this for all of those holes. Sometimes you will encounter errors like this. There's not a lot you can do except proofing your program, running through simulation. This is not something the simulation would have caught though. Because it the simulation just goes as fast as it can. It has no it has no speed limit, so it's just gonna go and bypass it right away. Well, I, I did change it in mine, but it didn't keep it. So it's something we'll just we'll have we'll talk about um, when you use your own program. Okay, so that tapped all the holes. This is the end of this program. I'm gonna have Genesis take this out and pass it around so you can all look at it. Uh, then I'll have her reset it up. I'm not sure if we'll be able to finish. Both operations on the back side, but we'll probably get pretty close. So, it, it, because all the coolant is recycled, it doesn't it doesn't lose much. Um, you know, the, this is I think a. 
a 20 gallon tank and it'll recycle through it quite a, quite a bit, maybe three or four times. Um, where we lose most of our coolant is just from evaporation. You know, the, this is kind of a warm shop. The, the water will evaporate out of the oil, out of the coolant, and then we have to add more water to top it up. How do the chamfers look, Jason? Clean. Awesome. Clean. 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 It, I promise it won't dissolve your skin. <laughs> okay, so make sure what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to have both machines up and running. I'm going to have we're going to cut some stock and then we're going to have people cycle through. But in order to be in here running your part, what do you have to have? Safety, safety glasses and close toe shoes. You have to have your personal protective equipment. Can we take our lanyards off first? Yeah, you could take your lanyards off or you could put it inside your shirt. They are safety lanyards. If you grab on them and yank on them, it, you know, they should come off, but it's not worth the risk. Please just make sure you put the lanyards back on before you leave class. Mr. Bard said I could take them off. I don't I don't want to hear from Mr. McNutt. Uh, okay. Wait, so, oh wait, Mr. Bard, so when we're doing this, yeah, just tuck them inside your shirt or take them off and leave them with your backpack. Okay, so you also need, uh, tomorrow we're going to go over and we're going to tune our feeds and speeds. And we're going to double check your program before you post it. Make sure you bring your flash drive so you can bring your program out here. Okay? okay? Any questions? Okay, so that, yeah. Why is there a ceramic uh, That graduate cylinder is what we use to measure out the coolant. Um, and it's really sticky. The raw coolant is really thick and sticky, so just leave it in there because it, it's just going to get dirty again. Okay, if you borrow safety glasses, please make sure you put them back. We're getting close to the end of the period. Uh, make sure you return the part to Genesis. Thank you for your help, Genesis. I appreciate it. Good job. Like you, can, uh, you can put it in. Yeah.